Hi everyone, I am Kingsley Mie, and I'll be presenting our work titled A Framework for the Design of Representative Neighborhoods for Energy Flexibility Assessment in City Lane. The motivation for this work presented stems from the fact that buildings constitute a large percentage of the grid load. In the United States, the number is 75% of consumed electricity, and similar percentages are found in other countries. We can achieve decarbonization by increasing the share of renewable energy sources in the grid fuel mix. Another path towards decarbonization is the adoption of energy efficient appliances and envelope retrofitting. Additionally, the electrification of fossil fuel engines can help achieve decarbonization goals. However, while electrification might reduce emissions on the building side, it would also mean increased emissions and load on the supply side if the power generated from renewables is not able to meet up with the increased electricity demand. More importantly, renewable power generation has a temporal dimension in the sense that it is not always available and is affected by weather conditions as shown by the DOCO. Therefore, we need a smart approach to manage and control building loads to ensure that electrification and renewable penetration do not bring about grid insecurity. The Department of Energy introduced the Grid Interactive Efficient Building Initiative to promote the integration of distributed energy resources in buildings that can provide the grid with flexibility. Improving the energy efficiency of buildings provides reduced load without making changes to the building function. PV adoption provides self-generation capabilities which offsets the net load that will otherwise be satisfied by the grid alone. To then solve the dock core problem, load shedding and shifting are needed. Load shedding and shifting can be achieved through smart control of storage systems. Hence, our work proposes controlled electricity and thermal storage using model free deep reinforcement learning as a pathway towards achieving load shedding and shifting. In reinforcement learning, an agent learns to perform a task by acting in an environment, giving some observed states. He then receives a reward that quantifies the quality of the action that was taken. By exploring the environments, the agent learns an optimal set and sequence of state action pairs that maximizes its cumulative reward. However, a major challenge for the adoption of reinforcement learning in buildings is the ability to benchmark control algorithms to accelerate their deployment on live systems. CityLearn provides a platform for benchmarking RLC algorithms for such control applications. CityLearn includes a district of simplified building energy models that may include energy storage systems for load shifting, as well as controlled heat pump power for temperature control in the buildings. On the other hand, a small DR and are integrated into the demand side infrastructure, quantifying flexibility capabilities of existing building stock as well as identifying best control strategies to accelerate the design and adoption of demand response programs are crucial. Particularly, understanding the impacts of geographic, climatic, and occupant behavioral differences on DER effectiveness can inform building design choices and guide policymakers. However, to carry out such an analysis at the urban scale, an inventory of building stock energy models is required. The end use load profiles for the US building stock database uses the rest stock and comp stock engines, as well as public and private utility and metering data to generate physics based simulation models. It provides 900,000 synthetic buildings representative of the residential and commercial building stock in the United States. With this comprehensive data set, residential, commercial, and mixed use neighborhoods can be created to study the impact of DERs and demand response programs. Thus, the objective of our work is to provide a framework that takes advantage of the availability of this large building stock database for comprehensive control algorithm benchmarking. We also prescribe procedures to design representative neighborhoods of any size and demonstrate our framework in a case study of three locations. This figure provides an overview of our framework where it is split into three phases. In phase one, the designer filters the database for buildings whose metadata meets certain design criteria, such as archetype and location. The designer may also choose to define building count in a neighborhood. The design for the selected buildings are done. The data for the selected buildings 
are then stored in a central database for easy retrieval and manipulation. Optionally, the variance in building loads and indoor conditions amongst buildings can be improved upon by replacing the as provided thermostat set point schedules with real world thermostat set points using the EOB donated data data set. In phase two, the collected data are used to run NG plus simulations to obtain ideal space cooling and heating loads. Other data determined from these simulations are domestic hot water, lighting, and plug loads. Finally, designer input for DR availability, including heat pumps, electric heaters, thermal storage, batteries, and PV systems, as well as the system siding for the buildings, is defined in phase two. The resulting system specifications and simulated ideal loads are then utilized to create a better representation of the intended neighborhood in city line. In phase three, the designer selects a control algorithm to manage the DRs in city line. Post simulation evaluation of control performance is achieved by the user selected KPIs that quantify energy flexibility, environmental impacts, or occupant comfort. Specific to our application, we follow the procedure outlined that uses a combination of data driven methods and random selection to identify representative buildings and thermostat set point schedules. Representative building groups are determined by clustering metadata fields, including build in year of construction, orientation, occupant count, infiltration rate, ceiling, slab, and wall insulation levels, window to wall ratio, and energy use intensity using the Keynes algorithm. Using the silhouette index, we determine the appropriate number of building clusters. And given the distribution of buildings across clusters for each neighborhood, a desired number of buildings is randomly sampled using a weighted approach. In a similar fashion, we identify representative set point schedules for selected buildings from the ECOB donated data, data set. We first designate each location as either cooling or heating dominant based on their cooling and heating degree days and determine the average daily set point schedule for each building in the region. We eventually apply dynamic time warping K shape clustering on the average daily set point schedules. We group buildings by similar set point profiles and select the cluster counts that maximizes the cumulative score of three clustering validation indices, namely Dawn index, Davis Balding, and Silhouettes indices. Our three neighborhoods of interest are in Alameda County, California, another in Travis County, Texas, and one in Chittenden County, Vermont. Aside Travis County, the other two counties are heating dominant. For the heating dominant counties, we restrict our analysis to January to March period of 2018, whilst the cooling dominant county is analyzed for June to August in the same year. There is a total of 962, 985, and 117 buildings that meet our pre-selection criteria. Of detached single-family buildings built between the 1940s to 2010s. We find that each county can be split into six representative clusters, whereas there are two representative set-point profiles in each location. We finally select 73 buildings at random from the clusters in Alameda County, 100 buildings in Travis County, and 42 buildings in Chittenden County to generate city land data for our control analysis and randomly assign set point schedules from the set point clusters to the buildings. Our control setup is shown where each building has been equipped with a battery and domestic hot water storage and has thermal and plug loads that must be met using the heat pump, electric heater, grid, PV, and storage systems. At each time step, an SAC reinforcement learning controller infers observations from the building and prescribes control actions on the storage systems. The building end use loads are first met before applying these actions to ensure that comfort is not compromised. The agent receives a reward signal that qualifies the actions it prescribes. We use a reward function that penalizes net export to the grid when the storage systems are not fully charged and penalizes net imports when there is still charge left in the storage systems. That's when the controller learns to make and pull use of its self-generated electricity. Our results show that all buildings in California and Texas are able to reduce electricity consumption from the grid compared to the baseline. 
on average, buildings in California and Texas neighborhoods are able to reduce energy drop from the grid by 19% and 30% respectively. Whereas only 14 of positive buildings in Vermont performed better than the baseline. At the neighborhood level, ramping is most improved on average in the three neighborhoods. California and Texas are able to reduce peak indicated by average daily peak and peak demand, but are unchanged in Vermont. Load factor is reduced by 2% and 12% in Vermont and Texas, but increases by 2% in California. Profiles in California and Texas show the ability of the controlled storage systems to take advantage of the daytime solar generation for charging and release the stored energy in the evening, thus reducing the aggregated grid loads during this peak period. The Vermont profiles for the cases with and without storage are very similar as the controllers do not learn the load shifting task as in the case of the other two neighborhoods. The battery state of charge distribution in Vermont shows irregular charge and discharge pattern and underutilized battery capacity for load shifting, which could be attributed to suboptimal controller hyperparameters as our own function. To conclude, we propose a framework for representative neighborhood design and DR control benchmarking using, using public data sets and city line. And we designed three neighborhoods in the United States with up to 100 buildings per neighborhood. We demonstrated up to 31.2% energy performance improvements depending on the location. For future work, we will carry out hyperparameter tuning to improve building specific control and transfer them into accelerate controller training. We will also expand the control action space to include other DERs, including heat pump control and electric vehicles.